Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and welcome back to another DVD update. And um, just before I get into it, um, uh, better be after this video because I said on the other video that um, finally I'm coming out. I already recorded some movie reviews, so hope you are looking forward to that because it's been a while since I did my did some movie reviews. So yeah, like I said, I finally get managed to get some recordings in because like I said I had to be in a good mood to do some videos uh, reviews but uh, but regardless I'm gonna be back doing that and hopefully in the next video or so so looking forward to that and speaking with the DVDs um, this one I already did review um, I just I just re I just recorded so but just showing it here as part of the ones I got now this one I, I as I'll mention in the in the review but uh, me and my brother enjoyed this film growing up but um, it is from one from Nickelodeon movies, but um, I thought it was still a pretty decent uh, animated film, and that is, of course, the, from the TV shows afterwards. Then that is of Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius. So like I said, so hopefully this will be the next review that's going to be rev coming up after this video. So, but Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius. Uh, next is of the one that that came out last year. Which um, surprised they make decent amount of money, despite you know what's what happened, what happened last year. But uh, that is of uh, Tenet, new film from Christopher Nolan. Um, stars, uh, which I actually didn't know that John David Washington, the star of the film, he's actually Denzel Washington's son. I didn't really know that uh, back then. So, yeah. But Christopher Nolan's uh, Tenet, also starring Robert Pattinson. Um, also, once again, collaborating with Christopher Nolan is Michael Caine. And you got director Kenneth Branagh in this as well. So yeah, Tenet. Next is another one of the Godzilla movies. Uh, to add in, and that is of All Monsters, All Monsters Attack. Also released as uh, also released as Godzilla's Revenge. So yeah, this is the original Japanese 1969. Then the English dub version is from 1971. So yeah, All Monsters Attack. Get a little closer there. Next, um, there are three films I want. Uh, these films I was interested in. Well, two of the ones are well known, but uh, three of these movies are directed by an actor who well, he's a direct. He's an actor and directed as well. But um, show these. But these three films here are from the same director. Here, first off is uh, in love. And War, starring Sandra Bullock and Chris O'Donnell. So yeah, In Love and War. Then he gets the award-winning movie, Chaplin, starring Robert Downey Jr., portraying as Charlie Chapman. And then you got the film, also the winning film, of Gandhi. Played by Ben, he's played by Ben Kingsley. Now, what I say about these three films here? Now, all three of these films are are directed by Richard Attenborough. Now, Richard Attenborough, if anyone knows the name, he's mostly well known. He's directed other movies as well, but in acting wise, probably everyone knows him from starring as John Hammond from Jurassic Park. John Hammond, the founder of Jurassic Park, yeah. So yeah, so all these three these three films here are directed by John Hammond, basically. Which uh, Richard Attenborough, he's, like, he's directed in films, he's films before uh, other, he's directed other movies, but as acting as well. But I've, as for acting wise, Richard Attenborough, he's always been known for me for as as playing as John Hammond from Jurassic Park. But as director, though, so these are the three of these films. He's also he's he's directed. So you got Chaplin, Gandhi, and then In Love and War. I know he's I know he directed another one. He directed a horror film with Anthony Hopkins, which I need to get. It's called Magic. I think it's about what a killer ventriloquist dummy, I think it was. Yeah, it started young Anthony Hopkins. Richard Attenborough directed that film, so I'll have to get that one though. I think also he directed another one called Grey Point, or was it Greyhound? I forget though, but but Richard Attenborough, you know, he's John Hammond in Jurassic Park, but as a director, I got three of his uh, three of his films and of course, he passed away in 2014. May he rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace, Richard Attenborough. Next is of... 
Put these over here. This is, the, this is the third entry in this in the franchise of The Crow. The Crow Salvation, which I had the first two, but um, the first one, The Crow of The Crow, classic. It is, but it's, it is also a hard movie to watch because of you know what happened to Brendan Lee. Because I enjoy Brendan Lee from Showdown Low Tokyo, Rapid Fire, among others, but it sucked what happened to Brendan Lee. That's why it's a hard. It's always a hard film to watch, even though it's it's a it's a really good movie, classic though. But what happened to Brendan Lee is just a tragic. But as for the sequels, The Crow City of Angels, I'm not a fan of. I think it kind of sucked. But this one, I think I this one I I put above Crow City of Angels. As well as the last one, what was um, frick, what was that one? The what was one called? And it sucked. Be that that that, was, that sequel sucked, and it sucked because Dennis Hopper was in it. My one of my favorite actors, he was in that, and it, that was a sad thing about. It. But this one, I would say, is the best of the sequels. Sequel wise, this is, I put it above the fourth and the second one. This is when you have you have uh, Kirsten Dunst a star a star in this. And William Atherton from Die Hard and uh, Ghostbusters, and for, and also what uh, what um one of the best parts was also that um the the villain of this one of the, the bad guys is actually played by Fred Ward, Fred Ward you know play Earl Bassett from Tremors and Remo Williams, and I I really enjoy Fred Ward as an actor, and. This yeah, but the, the sequel yeah, it's not great at all though. But I definitely say I definitely put it above two and three, two and four. But it was like a, Kirsten Dunst. I thought she was decent, but um, William Atherton as well. But uh, but Fred Ward I, as one of the is was like the best part for me, you know. And he gets a really bad um, come up at the end of this movie. So yeah, really enjoy Fred Ward. Uh, next is. This was, this was a hard to find one, but it was. This is actually the guy. This is the guy. This is directed by a guy who directed Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two, uh, Freddy's Revenge, and that is a Arachnid. It's another giant. Well, it's giant spider movies, which I remember seeing this on Sci-Fi long ago. I think it was. This is released by Lionsgate though, but and it's just by Tread Tremmark, the Brian Tremmark that did the Leprechaun movies. <laughs> Definitely able to watch this over the Leprechaun movies, but Jack Jack Shoulder, who directed uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two, Freddy's, Freddy's, Freddy's Revenge, he also directed uh, the '81 or '82 film called Alone in the Dark. No affiliation with the 2005 movie Ball movie, the same name. But I remember seeing the the, 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 the the practical effects in this, especially in the giant spiders, was pretty well done. Even though it's not great because it's characters and all that though, but I could watch it for a good special effects. Because there's, there's at least some time and thought put into the, the giant, what comes to the giant uh, spider. But as for other phones that are great, great about giant spiders, I think I put I has put eight legged freaks above this because even though it's CG though, but there are some practical moments in eight legged freaks. But I like David Arquette though. But um, as for other spider films, Arachnophobia is definitely one of the best ones. But this one is um. I think this is also one of those. I think this DVD is out of print. I think because I was looking other wares, and I think this is uh, out of print. If so, then I hey, I got one of the out of print movies in uh, of these this kind. So Arachnid. And there was also I remember there was also one other one called In the Spider's Web. I think it had Lance Hendrickson in it. I can't remember, but but as for other killer spider films, like I enjoy, I like, I love Arachnophobia, and then Eight Legged Freaks, and. Among others, well, some if they're, if they're bad CGI though. At least here that was effort with practical stuff. Next is of uh, another film, a drama starring Liam Neeson, that is of Michael Collins, and in supporting cast you have the late Alan Rickman, may he rest in peace. You have Julia Roberts, and then you have um, Stephen Ray. Uh, the name sounds familiar. Yeah, that name sounds familiar. Stephen Ray. I have heard that name somewhere before. And you got Aiden Quinn. <laughs> Aiden Quinn, I remember from who played um, from from Stakeout. Rich Driver's in the movie West of Ez, who was the bad guy. Aiden Quinn. But uh, yeah, Alan Rickman, you know, Hans from Die Hard and Snape from the Harry Potter films is in this, so. But, yeah, but I enjoy Liam Neeson and uh, yeah, Julia Roberts in this, so. 
this one got praised. Like, give this the back hair, giving it four stars, saying it's powerful. If you liked Braveheart, you'll love Michael Collins. Well, I don't know, so I haven't seen it, but I don't know if it would be good as good as Braveheart or not, so I will not know about that, though, but Michael Collins. Now, this is a very interesting interesting one, considering the hit, the bad his, the history of, it, of this production of this movie, <laughs> the, all the numerous problems that this film went through, and that is of <laughs> The Island of Dr. Moreau. Yeah, the film, the novel by H.G. Wells, and you got the effects by Stan Winston in, in, involved in this, and you got uh, Val Kilmer in this, and of course Marlon Brando, which you know how some, sometimes he was just like woohoo, you know, especially this movie. You had David Thulius as well, and I also know that Ron Perlman was in, uh, Ron Perlman was in this as well. So yeah, but the the, the numerous production problems this film had. Especially also with, with with Marlon Brando as well. Yeah. But uh, one thing I get, you can you can give credit to is the special effects in this film. Some of the practical effects were, was um well done though. You can give you I can I can give it that. And so I like Val Kilmer, you know, as well. So. But um. Uh, I have to give this give this a watch all the way through though, but. <laughs> I know it's just well. It's, if you say this is a good or a bad movie, maybe it's a, maybe it's so, maybe one of those so bad it's good though. But like I said, what if like, the countless problems this film had? So you have to you know just judge it up for you for yourself. And then next, uh, yeah, get them over here. Yeah, this is like I, I got to do the big pile up right here. So um, get into like uh, well. I got two animes though, but the other films are anime related. Well, let me show. I'll, I'll get to. I'll get to what I mean. But first off, um, as for animes, I got two other animes here. This one here called Gour Gourmet Girl Gour Graffiti. Uh, did not never heard of this one, so I have to give this a watch. But it's probably it's a girl who likes cooking, I guess. I'm sure it's it's, it's definitely not the same thing with uh, Food Wars though, but. It's something, so something that's like it's a girl who likes cooking. So give this a watch. So like I said, I never heard of this one, so I don't know about anything about this one. Now this I did heard of though. With its the story is, I'm not sure. I'm sure this is part. This one's gonna be a rant though in the future. So wait, the next time I do Anime Month, yeah, I'll think maybe this is. Given it's the story, uh, but hey, who knows? But uh, give give this give the setup of this, but uh, kiss excess. This if anyone's ever heard of this anime, you know the premise of this, you'll know what I mean. Yeah, so I don't need to go into details on on this one here, but. Hey, just for, for the sake of curiosity, you know, why not? Because everyone knows about this anime and the whole premise of it. Yeah. And anyway, so that's all for the animes. But the ones I'm getting to is see anime related. But um, these are the, these are like the live the live action adaptations from these animes. We'll start start here from the ones that are from the Japanese ones because these are. Live action adaptations of the animes, they're 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 Japanese. So, well, the first one and that is of Parasite, or though it's called Parasite Maximum. So yeah, this is the Japanese adaptation, the live action live action Japanese adaptation of the manga slash anime of Parasite, with our uh, main character Shinji, you know, got his arm, his right hand taken over by. You know, parasite and calls it Migi, which is Japanese for right for right. You know, so so yeah, this is this is the live action adaptation of it. So I enjoy I I like I like Parasite, which um I did get the I got I got the poster over there, so hang out right there. Just really quick to show. So yeah, I get the poster right there. 
and I like the and I like the anime, so I'm just curious to see how this w would look like in a live action version. Well, in Japanese though, of course, but see how it is like it is in a live action version. And next is the, <laughs> which I did I did review last year for Anime Month, and how ridiculous and. <laughs> But I, I, have, I can't help but have fun with the anime, especially with the ha especially with the ending was satisfying. But now seeing this as a, as a live action as a live action Japanese version, of course, but and that is of the live action adaptation of Prison School. Yeah, live action is right there. So yeah, I'm very <laughs> and this is um yeah this is I like the other ones like twelve episodes. This is like nine episodes. So yeah, so you know all of our characters, you know, live action. But, uh, so I'm really, uh, curious to, see, to watch this as a live-action version, so, yeah. The live-action of Prison School. Now, of course, now these are the, these are the American-made, these are three of the, uh, the American-made ones. And this, and I, and I know there, and this one here, this is, um, I know there's also a Japanese, uh, ver live-action version of this, though, but I wanted to get the American one first before I get to the Japanese one. But this is of Old Boy. Starring Josh Brolin, you got Elizabeth Olsen, Shoto Copley. Shoto Copley, of course, from, from District 9, Hard, Hardcore Henry. Of course, Josh Brolin, we don't know about Josh Brolin. Elizabeth Olsen, of course, playing Scarlet Witch in the MCU. And, of course, Josh, Josh Brolin at the same time, playing Thanos, as well as Cable. But also, you, you got, uh, you got Shoto Copley, you got also, not according to the cast here, but also Samuel L. Jackson, as well. And, and which, but the director though, I'm not big on, it's directed by Spike Lee. I'm not a big, I'm not big on the director of Spike, Spike Lee though, but I'm giving this, you know, a chance because, you know, it's a ad adaptation from, from the manga series, so I'm just giving, I'm just giving it a, 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 ch a shot here. But, uh, I wanted to give this a watch first, then I give the, I have to get the Japanese, other, the Japanese live action of this though, so... But yeah, so you get Josh Brolin, Elizabeth Olsen, um, Samuel Jackson, and Charlotte Copley. Even the, what was her name, who played Mantis also from Guardians of the Galaxy, Palm Clement, I think she's also in this as well. So Mantis as well. So yeah, so you got like three, <laughs> three MCU characters. You got Thanos, you got Scarlet Witch, and you got Mantis in this as well. Now this one did not, it was not worldly received well. This was a huge flop when it came out, so yeah. But that's old boy, the American one. And uh, next is this is of course this came out in 2017. Another one uh, adaptation from the from the an from the movie from the movie. I forget this was a manga series, but this is from the movie as well, the animated movie. And uh, that is of uh, Ghost in the Shell, which I did see, and I I thought it was decent. I didn't I, I did not hate this movie. Yeah, despite the whole freaking white, the, the, where they got criticized because of the whole whitewashing thing, because of the, the cast of Scarlett Johansson. That was at the same time the same thing happened with um, Tilda Swinton for her cast as the Ancient One and Doctor Strange. Yeah, I, I, I know this is there. The, the characters, the, how the where the characters were though, but as long as they do a good job, I can let that go, you know. Because hey, with Tilda Swinton as the Ancient One and Doctor Strange, she did a good job, so I had no problem with that. Here though. I thought it was. I thought it was, this film was decent, even with Scarlett Johansson's cast in this as well. Okay, I don't think that's that wasn't that big of a deal, but apparently when it came out, it was a big, huge deal. But uh, uh, although watching this again, I think I do put this above the animated one, which the 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 '90s anime of Ghost in the Shell, which I have to watch again because I do. What did I remember like? I thought I did like that one, uh, the original Ghost in the Shell animated movie, but um, I gotta watch it. I haven't seen that in a while, so but I'm just doing a comparison. But this one I thought was decent, and especially also one of the highlights of this here is him right here is uh, Bita Takeshi Kintano. Now, if you remember, if you recognize him. Well, he was in he was in Giant Pneumatic with um, Keanu Reeves, much younger because he had black hair, you know. But of course, he's much older here though. But I'm saying he was in Giant Pneumatic. But why I mostly remember him is he, of course, from if I remember from the show, 
the, the game show, Takashi's uh, Castle from the 80s. Or, if you want to put it as the American title, Most Extreme Elimination Challenge. Yeah, so that's Vic Romano right there himself. The English title, though. Yeah, so yeah, that's... So, yeah, his new name Takeshi, though, but in the English dub, it's Vic Romano. So, yeah, Vic Romano himself is in this movie. Which I, I liked him, you know, because for, uh, helping with the English dub and made it... Helping with the English dub of MXC made it very funny with uh, with him in it as well. Him. <laughs> but, uh... I, but I like Takeshi, you know. I, I, I liked him in Giant Mnemonic, and I haven't seen his other stuff that he did in Japan, though, but... Uh, besides MXC, though, but... It was nice to see. It was nice to see him in this because hey, I like him, you know. And his new comparisons. I haven't seen him since then. And of course, he looks older in this because it's been years later. But I like him, and I like him. It was nice. It was nice to see him in this. Yeah. So Vic Romano himself is in this. So that's one of the highlights for me right there. And they come now again to the last one now. So and this is another adaptation from a an, from the anime movie that was also done in the nineties. And speak was also with Samuel Jackson as well, which was old boy. Now this is another an adaptation, and that is uh, from the um, an from the anime uh, that is of Kite. Now I I'm not sure how this one is gonna be because according to this, this guy has so so very bad reviews. Even has a zero percent of Rotten Tomatoes. So I'm not sure if this is any good. If this was any good though, but um, we'll have to see on that. But because of Samuel Jackson, this well it doesn't mean just because Samuel Jackson's in it doesn't mean it's going to be good though. So yes, I think I think I think also that um, I think Samuel Jackson he is he is a fan of anime. I think it was why he did some of these. I think he's a fan of anime. So no, I don't think I, th I believe he is. Yeah. So yeah, Samuel Jackson just um, yeah, there's one thing I got. So, but it's from the other li live action adaptation from the anime with the movie Kite. Which oh, I did, I think I did. Did I show that from my DVD update long back? Yeah, I believe so because it came with a double. It was a double feature. It came with the original anime movie and then with the sequel, uh, Liberator. Yeah. But here, yeah, but this is the live action version of it from what 2013 or 14. So. But yeah, that's 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 the that's the live action of Kite, and that's basically it. So yeah, it's another uh, long DVD uh, update. So so a lot of, a lot of stuff here with animes and some other dramas and horror and what and other animes. But uh, yeah, so here's to get those uh ad ad movies a watch. Well, the first of the the live action Japanese anime ones. So <laughs> like. Parasite Prison School, especially, give you know, a kind of watch, and I did. Remember, I said, I said, Ghost in the Shell was decent, so. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video, and uh, stay tuned for, uh, the, the the next uh, video will be my uploads for the next, for more movie reviews. So stay tuned for those, and we'll see you all later.